Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Mr. Lux, and today is going to be our inaugural podcast. Uh, we don't have a name for it yet, but um, primarily we're going to be discussing destiny today. Uh, I also have my, my co-pilot with me, and co-pilot, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm N.Y. Walsh, and uh, I'm here to just hang out with Mr. Lux and just talk about some gaming. Nice. So... Um, so I guess we should kind of give a, a, a brief introduction of, you know, kind of what got us into gaming. And, and I guess I'll go ahead and start off. Um, I, the first time I ever really got into gaming, well, m- like most kids, you know, you get you got an Atari, six, Atari, what was it, 2600 back in the day. And that's what really got me into gaming. Uh, but when everything clicked for me was when I got my um, Nintendo. The, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. I hooked it up my, by myself, and I was just so excited. I played Duck Hunt, Gyromite, uh, and then from that on, that point on, I was just into gaming for pretty much up until this point in my life. I mean, I've gotten every console that's come out pretty much since then, from the Sega Dreamcast, all the versions of Nintendo that has come out, um, PlayStation, Xbox, um, you know, all kind of handhelds so I mean I've just been a big gamer my entire life and you know for me it's just a it's a real good escape from just the daily grind of your life of work and you know family and, and all those things and um, that's kind of I just I'm just a gamer at heart uh, I play all different types of games but um, you know that's kind of you know my introduction into gaming and what really just pulled me in what about you Walsh well, mine's pretty similar, um, you know, coming from way back in the day, playing the Nintendo, playing Mario and Duck Hunt, and where things really came with me was on the very first Madden, and just playing that and being able to see some of my old, my favorite players playing and play as them, or, you know, just being able to, to do anything football-wise. I've always been a big football fan, and that's where gaming kind of clicked with me and where I became, you know, it became an obsession with me. And as well as I've had pretty much every system. I've actually never owned an Xbox uh, or any of their systems. I've always been, you know, on the PlayStation side, and, and I've always wanted to own an Xbox, but when it came down to choice, it just came down to PlayStation. And I play mostly open world games as well as any kind of uh, sports game I play. Um, but here lately, it's just been Destiny, 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 Destiny all the time. And <laughs> that's where I'm at now, and that's where my heart is, and what I love doing and, and basically talking about. And I know that it can get overwhelming at times, especially for my girlfriend, but uh, she's pretty patient with it and loves it. Yeah, amen to that. I tell you what, man, I think the true MVPs of, of uh, our lives has to be our, our significant others because we can play on like it doesn't seem like we're playing the game that long and it, you look up at the clock and like four to five hours have passed by and it's like wow they must really love us to put up with us playing this game all night long so uh they're definitely the the mvps of our lives and being supportive of, of our of our gaming hobbies and and so to speak but um yeah you kind of talked about madden real quick and i don't want to you know veer off too far from what we're going to talk about today but yeah i remember those madden days man especially you had barry sanders you just keep hitting the spin but nobody could tackle him and you know madden was definitely i think a lot of people's uh draw for you know jumping into gaming and it's it was kind of like one of those first games that really hit big in the unit college universities and you know guys would be playing them in the dorm room and you know then gaming just kind of really right. took off from there because you know madden was mainstream it was and it was you know it was pretty much everything i look forward to every year and something that i always um save my money for or you know taught my mom into buying me and i still remember madden 95 just being able to run from wherever you're at you're on the opponent's 20 you can run all the way back to your end zone and do circles and get them all gathered in a bunch and then just take off and you could have thousands of yards rushing a game oh yeah you know, yeah that <laughs> yeah. was yeah that and tech mobile with the zigzag and i was a big tech mobile fan but let's let's just go ahead and then jump right into the podcast um so, you know, as, as Walsh mentioned, you know, th- we're big, big fans of Destiny. He and I play the game pretty much every day or every evening. And, uh, you know, we, we 
do do the dailies, we do the race, the nightfalls, uh, even this what's it, lost of the uh what's it called? The the Halloween event they have. Something of the lost. I kind of the lost. Yeah. So I mean, we just we just play Destiny all the time, and you know, I know a lot of people may think that you know this game can get repetitive, uh, and I would agree with that up until the Tekken King came out. Uh, I think since the Tekken King was released, they've done such a great job with this new quest system, and you know, time gating certain uh, events and exotics to make it feel fresh. So even though you may be doing some missions uh, multiple times. It doesn't feel like the the repetitive grind that it used to be in year one. What do you think about that? I would agree. They've opened up with the Taken King the opportunity to every week if they wanted or every you know couple months add new and fresh things in there. Even if it's as small as a quest, it's going to bring players who step away for a moment back in even if it's just for a week or two weeks to take care of their sleeper stimulant quests or any quests like that and what they've done with this i think is going to really set the bar for their future as well as any other games that decide to take on this type of role yeah yeah i agree i agree so um trials of osiris is uh still currently underway this is the second week of trials uh, in year two, um, how did your first week go? And I'm asking you, how did your first week go? Which I was a part of it. Uh, but give me your your thoughts on the first uh, trials of Osiris of year two with the new way that they're matchmaking based upon wins rather than connection only. I found it a little more fair, uh, not only just for myself, but some of the people that I would play with, the the random teams that I would put together, or some of my friends that aren't. The greatest, you know, were able to get some items or some gear that they wouldn't have gotten before. You know, I've, I've got a lot of my friends. I'm no way can Sherpa anybody, but they were able to get gear that's just as good as what I got in the lighthouse prior, if not better, now that they've added new perks to it. And me personally, I went was able to go 7-0, and and then we ran into, unfortunately, a team that just rolled us, and uh, we ended up going nine and two on the card and uh, i got some some really good gear out of it i got some nice a uh, nice scout rifle and shotgun that i've been using and it's i found it to be a overwhelmingly great change and, and i actually enjoy it more now than i did previously and it's something that i look forward to weekly then yeah yeah me too i i think in year one where you know a lot of people try Trials of Osiris, you know, including myself, that may not have been the best in terms of like those elite skilled players that go nine and zero on all three characters every single week. But you you still want to try because you know we're all in game players. We like to go and do every in game activity that Destiny has. Uh, but Trials of Osiris, it really kind of, you know, it that skill gap really limits you from from conquering that lighthouse on a consistent basis. Uh, I think the year two was really a big, a big change for them. And I think the the real hero of the, the Trials of Osiris change was the bounty system, which now, for those of you who don't know, in year two of Trials of Osiris, you can now complete Trials of Osiris bounties. You get six each week. And they're not that hard to complete. Uh, they're actually pretty easy. I mean, there are some where you get, I think it's like five team revives and it's like collective I mean, some of them are really easy and you'll get uh, there's three that you can get like your motes of light and and some other stuff. And then you have um, uh, you get 25 legendary marks on, on two of the different bounties. And then the last two is your silver and your gold package. And if you remember in year one, uh, the silver and the gold pack, well, at least the gold package was where you would get. Uh, was it where you would get like the weapon or the armor? I can't remember which one it was i believe it was the gold package you would be able to get you could get either one either a weapon or a armor piece okay so that they're really so in year two with trials of osiris being based around um you know wins it kind of it makes it at least in in theory it should make it to where when you start out playing with a fresh team 
you know, no wins, no losses on your card. You're going to play another team that's matched the same way. So it, it kind of really makes it a gradual step in intensity and skill level. And it really can make for some interesting, as they say in, in the competitive scene, sweaties or sweaties. Because uh, I've seen some matches on, on Twitter from a couple people that I follow that, you know, it can get really, really competitive once you hit that, that, Sometimes that six win mark, six, seven, eight win mark, because you're going up against teams that are on the same stage as you that are are really good. And, you know, you have to really play with some strategy. So it kind of limits the people who um, in year one that we used to play Trials of Osiris and just completely just just run over teams because just of the matchmaking system. Now it's going to be a little more competitive going forward. And I think it's a really good change. So. Yeah, and so back to the, like the the gear you can get from your gold package, uh, gold tier uh, Trials of Osiris bounty. Um, I got some. I think I got some boots on my Titan that had um, like advanced uh, uh, agility for like twenty seconds upon uh, respawn. I mean. The way you can get gear now, it really it, it makes it so much more enjoyable with playing trials because you know you don't have to feel like you always have to get to the lighthouse. I mean, you get something for your time. And the way they're they're retooling the weapons this time around, the adept weapons because there are no elemental primaries anymore. The adept weapons um, they just basically come with an additional perk, which can be good for the weapon, but you you don't feel like you're missing out on too much. Although that should be your goal is to get to the lighthouse. But I think now the way they got it, it, it's including everybody in on getting getting some loot. And I think that's a very, very welcome change. I, I agree. And, you know, seeing there's some helmets out, that are out there now that have, you know, on a respawn, you respawn your teammate and you get super ability uh, progression. And it's, it's really catering to everybody where previously the lighthouse and it should be a exclusive group because you put in the time you put in the work uh, be it you know previous experience playing coming into this or just training yourself in destiny to become a great pvp player to get to the lighthouse and it now it feels more rewarding because as you stated you know when you have six seven eight wins you're playing against somebody that has the same amount of wins where it was before you might have nine wins and you're going against a team that just wants to try to play it, especially, you know, on a Friday night where you get the people that, that in quotes, casuals that come on and they, you know, just want to experience it and play it. And now you're not going to, you're not going to run into that. So there's technically not as easy of a win going into your ninth victory. Right, right. Now, we would be remiss, Walsh, if we did not talk about this Trials of Osiris conversation, if we did not mention a certain subclass that, that wreaks havoc when you hear a certain sound, you go running, scurrying like little cheerleaders to find protection. Um, do you have any clue what that subclass could be? If I had to take one guess, it would probably not be a bubble titan but possibly a <laughs> hammer titan <laughs> ding 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 you are correct my friend the the hammer titan the solar titan or the sun singer or sunbreaker it's sun the sunbreaker titan boy it is fun to use but man it is so unfair to use man i tell you we, we walsh and i both have a sunbreaker titan uh we actually have all three classes but we've played as the sunbreaker titan before and the amount of power and, and invincibility that you feel once you pop that super and people just scurry away. And as long as it's, I mean, your super lasts so long, you throw, I think you can throw up to like seven hammers. I mean, if you get them off quick enough and the, the health regeneration, it, it's, it's almost dumb how, how strong that solar Titan is. I would, I would agree. And I, in thinking back to a specific game, and it, it was last week, and we were playing, and, you know, we were kind of pressed back, and they had pretty much every angle, you know, locked down with a sniper rifle, and in order to get us out of it, I popped my Titan Hammer, and you just hear the clang, and I try, and I go in and chasing people, and I don't get a kill with it, because 
they all scatter and they run away and I'm chasing one guy down and I finally get him down and that was the only way to get us out of that corner and what other subclass out there is there that does that there's not one possibly a storm caller but you're able to I mean you can you can easily take down a storm caller with a hammer titan it takes either three team shots or you know a, a good sniper to snipe them in the head twice and that's if they're running straight at you yeah and not to mention it takes two golden guns to take him down two <laughs> it takes two super shots from a a, a, a golden gun hunter to take down a, a darn sunbreaker titan i mean it's it's crazy how strong they made the, that that particular class and you just wonder how much testing did they do in their QA sessions with these new subclasses? Because obviously they had to do some testing to make sure they were balanced to a certain degree. But this is just, to me, so obviously just so strong, a head and shoulders above any other subclass. I, it it kind of baffles me how they, they released it in the in that form that it's that it's in. But uh, I think you said you had heard somewhere that there may be an upcoming nerf in later this year. Possibly there might be one in December. I believe they were talking that there's going to be a smaller update in November, which we'll talk about here shortly. But then there's also going to be a, uh, well, it says in the weekly update here, actually, I'm looking at it. It says, in the weeks to come, we will share a lot of details on how we'll be refining various weapons and classes in an upcoming December update. And it will ad address some things that you've told us and well, we've noticed during some constant studies during battles of rage that are among you. So that leads me to believe that that could only be the Titan Hammer that they're talking about in a, in a subclass update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let, let, as fun Which as it is, is to play as a Titan, it has to be done. I, I would agree. And it's funny you mentioned the two Golden Gun shots. Um, you know, without the Acleophage nowadays being out there and um, being able to not use it it uh you know that you don't have that fourth shot so you waste two on a on a hunter titan i mean excuse me a, a titan with your golden gun now you've only got the one shot left well there's still two guys to take down right and there are people out there that can 1v3 you so it's you know it's not a a guarantee like it pretty much used to be with your fourth shot yeah, exactly. And um, before before we get off the the Sunbreaker Titan, did you happen to catch the video of the guy in Trials of Osiris um, on the Bannerfall map, which is the the map for this week? Uh, he was going from I guess it's the left side spawn, the spawn that's that's not the, is the bad spawn. He was going towards middle mm -hmm. where B flag is, but towards the the left side door where the the heavy crate is in that little corridor right there. All three members of the opposing team were rushing him. He punched, he melee punched one and cauterized, however that you pronounce it, all three all three guys. So with one melee, he killed the entire team. Did you see that video? I did not. I didn't see it, but I'm going to have to look it up now. That sounds amazing and frustrating all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was, uh, you know how Bungie puts like certain videos of the week. Uh, on their weekly updates, I think that's where I've seen it. So, yeah, on the uh, web page, if you back. scroll down at the bottom, it should be there. There's a regular version of it, then there's a not safe for work version, but I didn't hear any difference between the two. But yeah, the guy comes around, does a panic melee because he knew that he was the only one left on it. Well, there was another guy left on his team, but they were far away from him. So he was basically 1v3 in the entire team in that one little small area. He runs in there. Just does a panic melee. He gets the melee. Then you get the sunspot. And the sunspot instantly kills the other two guys. So he got all three people with one, one melee. Now if that doesn't seem overpowered. I don't know what is. There, there was no tick off damage. Nothing. There was death. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Wow. That's, and you know. Thinking back to the trials and the weekly update I, one thing i saw that, that i found was interesting is you know they say that uh it's now balanced and as far as the number of people that are that should be making it to the lighthouse not to cut you off on the titan but 
you know, it shows that last May there were 188,000 people that made it to the lighthouse, whereas this week there was only 133,000. So it's down, you know, 55,000 roughly on the number of people that played and went to the lighthouse. So that to me shows that the trials of Osiris is on its way to being what we wanted it to be and I think once they are able to fix the the Hammer Titan and its PvP situation I think it's going to be very, very well balanced yeah I think it was like some like 16% that made it to the lighthouse yes yeah so that's uh yeah definitely definitely so while we're on the the weekly update now um you want to go ahead and give a, a quick rundown of what all was included in that update it wasn't a big uh, media update with a lot of uh, information but it was more or less discussing about you know they're what they're keeping an eye on and just uh, where the game is right now in its current state uh, did anything stick out to you in in the weekly update outside of the um, upcoming uh, patch or balancing that they're looking at for for December and November well the one thing that made me happy and I couldn't rejoice any louder was when they were talking about weapon parts. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had a weapon part crisis for yes, you have. well since the House of Wolves came out. Uh, once they allowed me to re-roll and I was trying to get the perfect sniper rifle you know I used all 2,000 that I had or however many at that time that I had and, and you know now I get seven and I'm able to get one node unlocked and I'm happy and, and rejoicing and, and being able to do something with glimmer and get weapon parts is going to be a heaven sent for me yeah it, it always it makes me laugh a little bit on the inside when i hear you talk about you're struggling for weapon parts so for you guys who don't know like walsh mentioned in the house of wolves this guy was re-rolling like crazy i'm like how do you how are you out without weapon parts now i mean he he was just going weapon parts crazy getting those those nice rolls on his weapons but uh i mean that's kind of what the house of wolves content kind of almost kind of encouraged you to do you know you get the ability to reroll your weapons which is awesome but at the same time i felt that doing that it kind of made drops that you got less important that that, that like right now the weapons that you get they feel more important to you. Even though if it's not the perfect roll, if you get at least two out of the three that you want, that's a solid weapon that you're probably going to hold on to. And I think that's what was missed in the House of Wolves uh, with the reforging um, part of it. So um, definitely glad that they are, are they're not using the reforging anymore. And I'm also glad that they're for people like Walsh that are out there. Well, I'm sure there's many of them that are struggling for weapon parts because they're trying to maximize their arsenal. Uh, now there's going to be a way that you can, um, you know, buy those weapon parts and continue to uh, build your, you know, clutter your vault, basically, which we need more vault space. But that's uh, for another conversation for another podcast. Right. And the other things that they were talking about was that uh, in December, uh, Petra will have a use for etheric light, which is going to be fantastic, as well as all the warm spore that's out there. And unfortunately, the hundreds that I've deleted. Uh, there's going to be some sort of exchange for her as well. So I think what the, those are, they didn't explain. Yeah. So I think the warm spore, I believe you would turn that into Eris. Am I correct on that? Yes. Okay. So Petra, you'll be turning into etheric light. I've actually forgot all about etheric light and I have probably about, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 of them in my vault, but I completely forgot I even had them. I mean, I've, obviously they don't really serve much of a purpose these days. So, and I'm curious what they will do with the etheric light. Um, I mean, what I don't know what else is out there that we could turn it in for. Um, you yeah, know, it's it's got me wondering because you know if you can turn it in for other parts or you know not not so much weapon parts, but um, you know because Varrick's gives you your materials that he's got. Uh, that are out there in the world, you know, are you going to be able to exchange it for that? Because you can already do that with legendary marks. It's uh, it's pretty interesting, and I'll be I'll be happy to see what's uh, what you're able to do with it. Because I've still got some, and I still get some on a weekly basis when I go visit Varrick's to get my materials, so I don't have to go and farm them. Yeah, on the planets anymore. 
Yeah, I, I, it is kind of kind of weird. Like, because at this point, it, I guess initially you would think the obvious thing would be for you to get rep for the queen, but you don't. I think past rank three, you don't get anything for. You know, this just you just keep ranking up your level, but you don't get anything else. Or does it stop at rank five, or did they increase it once the uh, Tekken King came out? Well, I believe you can still get. Uh, rep from her past rank five, but you get year one weapons, so they're still rank 170. Which apparently, from past experience this weekend, are still viable to use in Trials of Osiris or Iron Banner, uh, which you can still use in the regular Crucible. But um, I believe, and I haven't, I haven't ranked her up any since, but. Uh, I know previously that you were able to get her past rank five, and you were still able to get uh, the guns and things. So I think you can still get stuff from her, but I believe it's all year one stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really wish they would find a way that that it keeps the game balanced to do something with the year one stuff, because um, you know I know it'd be hard to balance those the vault of glass and the raid weapons because especially vault of glass because they were just so good. But stuff for like the what is that called? Prison of Elders. Uh, those weapons, because there are some pretty good weapons. Like the sniper rifle is really good. Uh, I think the pulse rifle was pretty decent. I, I wish they would find a way to a at least make those viable in year two. I mean, since I consider you know Prison of Elders in-game content as well, and I think for your in-game content, at least right now, it, it shouldn't feel outdated if it's still viable in the game. But I, I think they're they're kind of up. They're in a real tricky situation right now on how they, what they leave behind versus what they carry forward. Um, real quick, what do you think about the exotics that did not carry over to year one? Do you think that eventually we will get all of them or some of them in in year two or beyond? I think that we have to, based on the fact that you know we tried so hard to get the bones of AO and you know those eluded me for the longest time as as well as you know some of the the barracks weapons or the the prison of elders weapons you know some of those can still re be really useful you know like right now in the king's fall raid we're able to use the bones of, of AO on the jumping puzzle with the ships and we didn't I didn't get those till probably two or three weeks before the update came or the new DLC came for the Taken King and I feel like they they were a waste you know I don't use them but for one specific section but they're so fantastic to get around the maps on and to do different things and to escape you know, in Trials of Osiris or any kind of PvP situation, you know, and, and I think based on just that alone, I would say that, yes, you are able to, they're going to eventually bring them at some point. And I think we kind of saw that with Zer a couple of weeks ago when he was selling, um, I believe it was a helmet. Yes, the he Skull of Dar Arhankama or something like that. The yes, Warlock. For the yeah. Warlock. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think if they if anything that it's out there now and we're gonna slowly see them through Zer and we just won't be able to earn them through Ingrams due to us being able to farm Ingrams as long as you have strange coins and three of coins. Yeah, I agree. Because um, I, I remember the first time I went through the King's Fall raid, I actually equipped my my bones of AO on the on the thrusting wall uh, jump puzzle. Uh, and it was at that time before, you know, I knew about the whole sword, you know, thing and all of that, uh, that really helped out. And, you know, even the, like the weapons, like the necrochasm that they gave a, a buff to that was really fun to play for that one week in between content. It's like, why would they put that much effort into balancing that weapon to make it viable and make it fun to use? Then it becomes basically irrelevant. So I really hope that they find a way to fairly implement uh, these weapons. Uh, I mean, we all know what the real reason is why only certain weapons, they even made the decision to only have certain weapons come and some not to come. I think it all stems from the Yalahorn. Um, 
Yalahorn was such a big uh, topic of discussion in year one in terms of the LFG sites, uh, which Bungie kind of latched on to, to, um, you know, base their point off of, of leaving it behind. Um, I think there's still a way that we can, they, they can have Yalahorn come forward. Because if they can get that weapon to come forward into year two, there's no reason why other weapons, I mean, other, you know, exotics can't move forward into year two. I think that's the only one that they struggle with. And I think initially they're going to struggle with, even if they do bring it forward, of people gravitating towards it because of what it used to be and how it made them feel, how powerful it made them feel. So, um, I don't know. They may have to. It may have to lose its wolf pack rounds, which is is one of its most identifiable traits of the weapon. Or they're gonna have to really um, do. I don't know what they could do to it to make it feel just as good, but on equal playing field with the other year two stuff. I, I agree. I, I don't know what could be done with it because, again, we don't want to make it, we don't want it to be overpowered, or at least I don't want it to be overpowered to where, you know, that's my escape route. I like being tested in my skills and being able to survive rather than, you know, I get in a panic situation and I gallahorn my way out of it. Right, right. Yeah. So. I mean, I think one of the saving graces they have now is that they they changed a lot of perks on, on some of the exotic gear uh, in year two. And I think that they changed some perks on some of the weapons as well. I'm trying to think. Did, I believe they did change I, some stuff. I think there's some that have a, a couple changes in them. Uh, specifically, I don't know which ones, but uh, I did notice that there were some changes on a couple of the helmets and um you know one thing that i that i think that uh, is great is them having the glass shards and being able to re-roll your exotics to have you know more intellect or less intellect or you know anything to suit your needs rather than constantly having to find that drop Oh yeah, man. I I've actually I had bought some of those glass needles and I I didn't use it for like two weeks. And just here recently, I decided to use them. And on my I forgot which helmet it was. I believe it may have been my um um uh, the knucklehead radar. Uh, I used it to get uh, and it was like on the first roll I did. I got I think it's inverse shadow where you um. You get kills of minions, minions of darkness to get uh, more super energy, and then the second perk was special weapon kills give super energy. So um, I like those perks that help build that super meter, and I think it, I got a full intellect roll. So those glass, and then on top of that, whatever progress you have on the nodes that you're trying to unlock on those exotic gear, that remains even when you do the glass needle. So you may get a completely new perk in a slot, but you'll still keep your progress for that perk slot. So I think that's really cool the way you don't have to start all the way back over, which is something I think they learned from year one. Uh, I think, was it from uh, the Dark Below days when they when they made us re, you know, re-roll the, uh, re-buy the exotics again and we had to re-level them or something like that? Yes, it was the, it was the Dark Below. You could bring over any of any that you wanted as long as you zero was selling them however you had to completely re-level them and at that time leveling your exotics took forever oh yeah yeah it took all week's bounties you know for all three characters to to finish it out and you know there's a lot of people that don't have that time so i think you know now they don't have the damage upgrades and then like you say with the the glass needles you know, it doesn't reset your progress. And I think that that kind of shied a lot of people away from bringing forward all of their weapons or all of their gear, as well as I, I know that there were some people that completely stopped playing the game because they just didn't want to take the time to relevel stuff that they had already put all that time and effort into. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I definitely like all the changes at, at, up to this point with uh, the Taken King. Uh, I mean, it's so much stuff in the game now. It, it's actually a bit overwhelming to when you log on to try to uh, do anything. It's just a lot that you, excuse me, a lot that you can still do. Like, even just for the sake of just fun, going back and completing some of the quests from, like, 
Dark Below and House of Wolves just to, you know, see how they structure the quest lines around those things. And it's just so fun now. And I really like the state that the game is in. And it, it, it encourages me how they're going to build off of this for, you know, years to come. And, you know, I think we're right now Destiny is in is in a very, very good place. Um, it's brought a lot of the guys that we uh, haven't played with for months back to the game on, and they're staying on a more consistent basis and, you know, doing the raids and trials of Osiris, like we had mentioned. Um, uh, oh yeah. One thing I wanted to go back to as far as the weapons that did get new perks, um, Cirrus regime got with the spinning up node with the spinning up perk. So they did, um, make some perks uh new perks for certain weapons so they could definitely do something with yellow horn but i just wanted to go back to that real quick because it, it i had thought about that all right so it looks like we're um just about approaching time um thanks for all you guys who have been uh, listening to this podcast um this like i said this is our first inaugural podcast more or less a pilot just to uh kind of get our structure down but i hope you guys enjoyed it and leave us some feedback uh in the comments below uh, Walsh, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at nywalshjets13 and also on uh, PlayStation at the same nywalshjets13. Nice. And I'm Mr. Lux, and you can find me on PlayStation Network as Mr. Lux. That's M R underscore L U X. Also, I'm on Xbox as well. So for all you Xbox fans out there, you can find me at Lux21, L-U-X-2-1. I'm on Twitter at Mr. Lux, and that's all one word, M-R-L-U-X. And also on YouTube at Mr. Lux, M-R-L-U-X. And I believe that's pretty much all the different places you can find me. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, Walsh, how did you feel about today's podcast? I felt really good. Um, I think, uh, you know, we had... A lot, of, a lot of good topics and looking forward to some feedback and uh, any kind of uh, viewer topics that, uh, or any questions that uh, they may have, as well as, uh, you know, I want to put it out there that it won't just be Destiny that we're talking about, but uh, currently, you know, that's what uh, what we're hooked on and what we're, you know, into, And but, uh, you know, looking forward to the future and, uh, you know, talking to everybody else out there. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening to the podcast, and we will see you again next week.